and thank you for joining us on another engaging and captivating episode of The Property Show. This show is designed just for you. Whether you're considering to buy, to let a family home, an apartment with fabulous amenities, both completed and off-plan, as well as great investment opportunities available in the market, this is the show to watch. Earlier this week, we were hosted by the Mombasa County Government. Our conversation focused on investment opportunities available and how we can plug in. Catch that later on the show. Let's kick off with our property pick of the week. Zanadu Luxurious Apartments, a holiday getaway home with a vibrant theme setting the bar for the 21st century living standards in the coast region. Let's have a look. Zanadu Apartments present an amazing residential beach development that clutches the spot on definition of life on the beach. These luxury apartments are located in Mombasa along Bamburi Beach. Zanadu offers the perfect holiday home investment in one of the most envied holiday destinations in Africa. This development consists of five apartment blocks. There are five floors, a total of 25, three-bedroom apartments, and five three-bedroom penthouses. Zanadu is a state. It's beauty, and it's, it's luxury, and it's just this heavenly place that we are in today. Um, as you can see, if you look Behind me, there is the ocean right next to us, and that is where Zanadu is. It's right on the beach. In fact, as Zanadu was being developed, one of the issues that we had was that we're seated right now, there was a lot of sand, and so we had to dig all that up, and we had to do something called rafting, uh, so that we have a very steady you know, structure coming up. And here we are today. Zanadu is up and running. So what we have at Zanadu is five blocks of three bedroom apartments, ground floor plus four floors, but the fourth floor has a penthouse. Inside there's a spiral stairway that connects one level to the other suite above it, so that you've got a duplex apartment that starts from the fourth floor and uh, takes up the fifth floor too. So that is what Zanadu is. If you take a look at the blocks and the way they are structured and the way they are planned, they are set obliquely so that everyone has a view of the ocean. So from every apartment, you get a view and a nice view of the ocean. So these are three bedroom residential apartments. Some people have bought them and they've bought them uh, to run as uh, furnished self-catering or serviced apartments uh, because the idea is to promote family life. We want people to come here with their families and enjoy a family life together, cook their own meals, you know, have some fun time together and enjoy the pool, enjoy the ocean, just walk around the gardens. This is the kind of lifestyle that we promote at Zanadu. As you drive into Zanadu, we've got a very nice wooden frame and the metal gate, a combination of both. A little bit bias on the wood, so we've got more wood on the gate, which makes it very nice. And then as you step inside, we've got a generator and a transformer for backup power. For all the 30 units that are here, we've got about 1.5 parking spaces uh, for each apartment, which is really more than enough for this place. And then we've got the gardens, okay? Then we have sidewalks, very nicely done. We've got lighting out on the gardens. We've got a swimming pool at Zanadu. We've got a lift access on every floor. And, and those lifts are eight packs. Next to every other lift, we have a staircase. So if you don't want to use the lifts for whatever reasons, we've got a staircase for that. And it's really wide, more than two meters wide. So out of the lifts and into the apartments, you've got to love our doors. The woodwork at, at Zanadu is amazing. We've used hardwood 
mvule uh, on all the wood finishes starting from the door all the way inside and then the flooring um, our tiles uh, very good quality tiles we have fitted kitchen with a fridge cooker and outside there's a washing area that's washing machine ready and uh, into the bedrooms we got acs mombasa can get really hot like right now this period all the way to march so we've got cooling systems for that and then we have amazing size balconies and that's exactly where i'm seated right now you can see how wide the balcony is it would fit your garden chairs and tables a swing and this balcony goes around the apartment so you can walk from one end of the apartment just round to the other one and all that is just your balcony area zanadu is open to the general market and anyone can own zanadu really our prices are really good that's one thing the sizes of these apartments are good so all you need to do is get in touch with us and we'll take you through the easy process of owning zanadu both mortgage and self-finance clients you're welcome and we also do have an opportunity for those who probably would not be able to own Zanadu because we can't all own here, it's only 30 units. Um, you can come and spend your time here because they are open for rental as uh, short-term stays for holiday. Again, the rates are really good as compared to what is being offered around, especially in hotels currently. So come and experience that. Talk to us. Again, that easy process. We will bring you here you will stay here with your family for the weekend enjoy the pool enjoy the beach and then go back home i would tell you in simple words why is anadu this is a lifestyle it's as easy as that so if what you're looking for is a certain kind of a lifestyle then we've got that because that is what we've been selling this is what zanadu is all about it is a lifestyle attracted me to this apartment is the spectacular swimming pool, lush gardens, spacious rooms and of course big windows with clear views of the ocean plus a lot of natural light and a great place to wake up. The holiday season is here. Book the Nadu luxurious apartments and experience a holiday like never before. At First Avenue, our team simplifies your property buying process. Basically, you don't need to worry, we have you covered. Just call on us or visit our offices, we'll hold your hand every step of the way. Many have asked me, is Mombasa County ready for investors? The County Minister for Land, Housing and Physical Planning shares the master plan and takes us through investment opportunities available that you'd want to be part of. The real estate sector is one of the sectors that is fast growing in Mombasa, probably competing with logistics and now the new fisheries industry that we are starting. But uh, overall, real estate has been a major, major contributor to the economy of Mombasa County. In terms of which particular category we look at, the lower category is growing extremely faster than everyone else. There is a small stagnation on the upmarket properties, but again now, properties especially along the beach have also started picking up because there are quite a number of investors from outside the country. Vision 2035, we as Mombasa are proud that we are the first county in this country that has come up with a vision that talks about how our country will be for the next 20 years. And within those 20 years, we have laid out each and every part of the county, knowing that they have a challenge of limited land and we also have a challenge of expanding population. Because by 2035, we're estimated to be 2.2 million people and the uh, majority of those people will be during the day and during the night we expect to have around 1.8, 1.9 million people. That means that we have to plan for them. So we have laid out the entire plan of the county. We know where we want to have a school, areas where we want to have certain facilities. We have also mapped them out and zoned them out. So 
What we've done with Vision 2035, we've also delivered five more cities. For example, on the northern side, we have a place called Mwakirunge. In the Mwakirunge area, we are going to have all the learning institutions we develop. When you look on the western side, that's from the port area going upwards. We have Miritin area, Jomvu area, all those areas, we have segregated them specifically for industrials. And then we have the Likoni side, which for many years has been segregated, has been a very discriminated area. And that is why majority of the people are extremely poor. So what we've done with areas across Likoni, we have two particular things that are going to happen there. There is a special economic zone, which as majority of the people understand, it is something that is in the public domain. We have already signed two or three months ago when the TCAD event was taking place in Kenya. The president signed with the Japanese president for the special economic zone to, to be there. And then further up towards the border of Kuala and Mombasa, we have what we are calling Pungu area. That is designated for a petrol city. All petroleum products, all petroleum related activities will take place there. When you come to, to the CBD as currently it is, it will be expanded to be more of heritage and culture areas such that what you used to see as old town and features that are attracting tourists to come and see will expand them further so that logistics like buses that are inside town that are within the CBD will be moved further up in places like Changamo. Matatus or PSV vehicles that are within the areas of Baxton will also be moved further up towards the north. So what we have done in a nutshell is that we have turned around the county of Mombasa from just a box full of nothing into a plane that can move in whichever direction you want to move and make money for whichever investor that is there. I will shock the world to tell them that probably this is the only vision that has been launched and is already operational. This is a living document. Living in that, we've already started working on it. With the population increasing, then we need more houses. So what we have done, we have launched a plan to redesign what you're calling urban renewal, redesign all our old estates. We have an estate like Baxton, which currently has around 500 units that are sitting on 23 acres. We have an estate like uh, Hadija that has only 100 units sitting on uh, 18 acres. So practically every person is living on an eighth while the rest of the population is being pushed further and further and that is not working to supporting the economy of this county. So what we've done, all the estates, we are remodeling them, we are redeveloping them and putting up high-rise estates, but all the estates have got specific amenities. The first one is electricity, specifically for them. The second one is water. The third one is waste management. And the fourth one is road network. So logistics towards those estates is specific for them. So that means that the problems that we've been having previously are suddenly, especially like jams and all that, are suddenly going to vanish in thin air. When you look at the other aspects, like additional transport system other than the one that is in existence now. We are only using road transport now. But uh, within Vision 2035, we are going to put up jetties where people can move their cars somewhere or park their cars somewhere, jump into a boat, cross over, instead of waiting for a bridge that is already jump packed. Number two, we are also extending as a siding of the current SGR. We are going to have a train system, a metro system across the city from the south all the way to the north and from the airport in the western side of Mombasa. So practically, we are remodeling Mombasa and those aspects have already started because as we speak, the housing project is uh, at the environmental assessment impact level where most of the houses, estates, are already in that, in that stage. So within a week or two, we should be able to start breaking ground in one of the estates for us to, to start. Mombasa County is a one-stop shop for investments and they are ready to engage. Coming up, the accessory spot on styling your home with antique Swahili furniture. I got this inspiration from a friend of mine who when he saw, I did one door for a client's home. 
Then uh, he said, oh, you can do a lot. That's how I started my work. So what I do in Lamuasili Furnitures, we do a lot of furnitures for homes, ranging from the doors and then furnitures, like for example, the TV stands, coffee tables, all sorts of furnitures. Originally, the Lamu Asili is from the work of the uh, original work from Lamu. Then I made this uh, from the Asili designs to also modernize so that people can accept from the modernity and the old style. Yeah, I've never imported anything. Uh, anything that we do is local. That way we're able to showcase our talents to clients and many clients have appreciated. And in that matter, they appreciated that we do many things genuinely. You see, many important things, they come uh, fake. They don't last. So we, we decided not to do that kind of work. What happens, there are two versions. One version is that a client decides uh, what type of uh, designs the, the client wants. The second version is I come with my own designs. Mostly, it happens that whenever I do, they like it because they say that whenever they see from what they, they have seen it uh, from maybe pictures or magazines or anything, it's like very common, you see. So they always urge to me that come with a different style, something that is unique, it's not easy to find everywhere. And that way it has made me to become, uh, you know, very competitive. I do more of uh, doing my own styles. Some of our furnitures are locally made and others we import from Pakistan, Morocco and uh, South Africa. We deal with that, we buy old scrapes, dows from coast, we dismantle, then we do dining table, coffee tables, benches, dining chairs, beds, side tables and other small things. Spruce up your home with Lamu furniture and bring the coastal feel into your space. Let's hear people's experience once they shift to 4G network. Unbelievable. I've heard about 4G from my friends and I think it's um, going to be efficient for me. I'm an entrepreneur and I want to switch to it for, my, for efficient browsing, to talk to my clients and to basically because I'm young too, to browse. So I think 4G is going to be the way to go and I'm expecting so much from it than what I get from my, from my 3G line. So I'd like to advise everyone out there, don't wait, do things faster, switch to 4G and let's all move together to the better option. I can't say that I'm so much experienced about the 4G thing because I've done it today. But for the few minutes or few hours I've used it, I've seen it is so fast compared to 3G. I'm expecting a lot from the 4G network, yeah? Like for business purposes, because even though we are working, we've got some side hustles. So for my side hustle, I expect that it will help me to be fast in sending emails, to be fast while communicating with my clients. The switching took less than five minutes. That was good of Safaricom. They should keep up. My advice to people who are using 3G, yeah? don't wait, do things faster. It will be faster for browsing, faster for social media. So you are wasting time wherever you are seated. Just wake up and stand up from your couch. Go swipe your SIM card to 4G. It is better than 3G. Go 
going to get hurt. I'm doing my best, bro. You need to remember that chapo day with mom, remember? Let me send you a video. But I can't wait. You have it. Watch it. We come together as a team and fight for this club. Make sure that we are never... What? Do things faster. Do things Safaricom 4G. There you've had it. Don't wait. Shift to 4G. Do things faster and better. It's now time to take a quick commercial break. After the break, our viewers will share their take on the show. Interesting. Don't go away. Welcome back. When it comes to electricity, many of us wonder which is more expensive, postpaid versus prepaid. Let's get the answers from the experts. Want to make a clarification and to take us back again we have 2.8 million customers right now on prepaid metering regime and at kenya power apart from prepaid regime we also have what you call smart meters the smart meters we are just introducing them the smart meters are like the postpaid meter but we don't come to read we get the readings in our office however they are a very expensive meter so we are actually shifting into that slowly now on the prepaid meter the billing regime has not changed it's exactly the same as the postpaid meter the only difference is the postpaid customer pays after usage the prepaid customer pays before usage however our billing regime is based on a monthly consumption so you see, for you on the postpaid meter, at the end of the month, we pick your full units consumed and make a calculation for your levies and the standing charges, which is of course billed ones. Now for the prepaid customer, we'll bill you for fixed charge once. Uh, let's do a calculation, a quick yes. calculation. Yes. If I buy my token, a thousand shillings token, yes. Yes. explain to me what I'll get out of that token. A quick uh, check on that. On average, when you put all the levies together, you use about 20 shillings. That's the levies together with the units consumed. Because you're having 12 shillings that has already gone, or the units consumed. Mm -hmm. Then we add in the levies. So on average, what we'll say an effective cost, not the cost per unit, but the effective cost of a unit is about 20 shillings for a domestic customer. So my token for a thousand shillings will give you now a thousand divided by 20. Mm -hmm. That will be how much? A hundred. That will be a hundred units. Mm -hmm. Now a hundred units for a domestic customer puts you in the 51 to 1,000 units category. category. Mm -hmm. Now let's assume you came home and you decided for the hundred units you're going to use in the month, mm -hmm. you want to use 200 shillings for example. If you buy a, a energy for 200 shillings, 200 divided by 20 gives you how much? It gives us about 10, 10 units. So you've come into the first category. Mm -hmm. We have made an effort to explain, Nancy, to the customers, and will not stop because the customers must understand it yes. for them to be comfortable with buying mm -hmm. our, our token. But you see, if let's say you buy the first 100 units, then you come and buy again. In our system, we are putting together your total consumptions. You know, we had stored for you within that month 100 units. When you come to buy the next, now the units go up. Now, how are they going up? 
we are now looking at how much are we going to levy you because most of the levies like for example warma is a shilling this much money against a unit so when your units go up in the month we also levy you more so basically actually the thing even i mean the forex the same way the fuel cost adjustment the thing that is happening here is that the levy is just changing but if you take the best way for you to appreciate that what you spend is the same if it was a bill a postpaid bill is that put together all the money that you have used in a month and the units because we normally communicate both the units and the shilling then sum it up when you sum it up you find that it comes to exactly the same as if you had used a postpaid meter the thing that keeps changing here is you are spending more now the percentage you are calculating for what you have used in the month goes higher because assume earlier on we had done a forex for you against 100 units 1% of 100 units for example then you buy now a total of 200 units your forex will go up because now it will be based on 200 yes. units yes. not 100 units so the issue here is that unlike where we put all your consumption together and did for you one time calculation you are buying in steps uh -huh. let's say one percent of 200 is not the same as one percent on on 100. on 100 and that now has to be subtracted the variance that should have gone in the previous 100 now comes in the in the new 100 if for example you you use less than 50 units your first purchase that doesn't have a vat component the moment you get into the six uh, the 51 unit we impose a vat component that means that your second purchase will be less units than from the first purchase Actually, I stumbled on this. My friends were discussing and, and they didn't know I, did, I work for Kenya Power. So one was telling the other, I have land. If you want to really save on energy using tokens, you buy all your units the first week of the month. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't it's just matter. how much you use. And, and it's, it's just good that uh, we encourage our customers, once you have established your average consumption in the month, buy it, buy it. at once. Buy it once. Because if you buy, for example, excess, you buy units that will take you for three months. It's fine. But you see, when you come to buy units now on the fourth month, we shall bill you the standing charges for the three months when you didn't buy. Tune in next week for life-changing safety tips. show I came to view it through KTN and uh, it's a whole diverse thing that I really enjoy the work that they are doing not only are they viewing about property but also diversifying in terms of infrastructure in IT yeah it enlightens one's mind that you're not so stuck in certain cocoon that okay my house is okay uh, you will be getting there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to learn. Property show is just for you. I watch a property show every Sunday from 5.30 to 6.30 because uh, it's a show that actually motivates everyone in the society, especially what they bring in terms of interior decors, what people do with their kitchens, their bathrooms. You know, everything about it is something that uh, actually inspires me. The home ownership segment takes us back to Bandari Apartments. Our guest will share on how he settled for these apartments, how to raise the initial deposit, and the advantages of buying property off plan. You'll love this story. Take a look. I 
bought this property in 2013 and I've been staying here from then, June 1st, 2013 to date. I like Bandari because it's, it's proximity to the airport, to town where I work, to the hospitals, main hospital, mention Arabi hospital, mention Mata, proximity to schools. We have uh, highway secondary school nearby. We have Brook House, the end of the road, and the other schools. The most challenge is raising the deposit. The 30% deposit is not very easy money to come by. And you have to sell your cuckoo, sell your cows, get loans in there, go to the cooperative. By the time you are through, you are almost broke. And when you are broke, the mortgage comes in. So it's not an easy task. Bandari Apartments is the way the houses have been put up. You can open windows both sides of the house so air can come in. It's a very unique kind of setup. Don't wait, do it now, because the prices keep on going up. Like these houses, initially they were seven million. People came in second, people came in, were buying them for nine million. And if you come now, you'll get them for 14 million. So the longer you wait, the more you miss out. So my advice to them is that don't wait. There'll be no ready time. Just sell your second-hand car if you have one and move in. Bandari phase two is fascinating. If I'll be allowed to upgrade this one and move there, I'll do it today. But however, since they, have, they might not allow that, I'm going to look for money, the deposit, and try to move there because the rooms are in suit, which is a feature we don't have here. They are more special, they are bigger, a feature we don't have here. So for anybody who has not participated in this phase one, please move to phase two. Bandari apartments are within easy reach no matter where you're traveling from. Phase one is completely sold and occupied. Phase two is available for sale. Book your apartment today. While in Mombasa, we attended the third annual Entrepreneurs Bootcamp where different SME companies meet to discuss and get advice on transforming their businesses. Many were inspired on how to take their businesses to the next level. Let's hear what the experts said. The Cabinet Secretary, Aden Mohamed, kicked off the program and shared how the government is supporting entrepreneurs. access to finance which is the elephant in the room always every I hear most people talk about this uh, recent uh, review of interest rates by Parliament uh, is an important step I know commercial banks will have some views and some ideas but the principle and the spirit of what has been done makes sense and we like to encourage and appeal to our financial institutions to make sure that the support of businesses within your sectors are, you know, fast tracked as quickly as possible, as opposed to reacting negatively to that regulation, is to see how we can support this sector. You know, you are entrepreneurs, some of you are starting afresh, some of you are at a fairly advanced stage in your business. But if I could classify all of you as small and medium sized businesses, you are the people who are the backbone of this country, be it in job creation, be it in creation of wealth be it in alleviating poverty, many things. And so we really want to make sure that the support that you get, the coordination, the linkage that you get between yourselves and the government, between yourself and some of the bigger players in the corporate sector are all encouraged and made to happen uh, as quickly as possible. The issue that I think outside of the commercial banks and finance that is important that you need to be aware of is the you know, emergence of the private equity funds that we see a lot in our country. Kenya is becoming one of the most attractive destinations for private equity players to come. These are people who want to put money for equity and not lend money to yourselves. And a number of your colleagues, either here or elsewhere, have 
manage to get some of those equity investments, I would encourage you to look out. I hope you will get a chance to invite some of these private equity players so that they can talk to you about what are they looking for as far as equity investments from those players uh, are going to be. Of course, I was there too and engaged the experts on the coastal real estate landscape. Give us an overview of the real estate markets and especially in the coasts. Real estate market in the coast, of course, for the last two, three years, we have seen the market recorrecting. For Since you remember, like for almost five years ago, real estate in Mombasa really escalated really up. And as any market, it's always about going up, going down, going up, going down. But now we are looking more for recorrection. The price is right. People are now asking for crazy prices. I mean, it's good. It's good business. A lot of developments that are in the coast region are very high end. How are you matching for people who are looking for two, three million shilling homes? What is Mombasa doing? When it comes to doing low cost housing, you have to do a big project. You have to really scale up. You can't do low cost, do five units, 10 units. You have to do over 100 units. And the fee issue has to be very, very high. But if we can get incentives from maybe the government, I'm sure now the financing is more affordable, which is a good thing. But with the infrastructure, we can have more locations to do more affordable real estate. So it all boils down to infrastructure, finance, and ability to scale up. Over to you, Winnie. Uh, give us an overview of what you see the market changing in terms of building materials. Building materials are usually a factor of many things, um, kind of project. So as the market is changing, we are seeing a shift to where people are starting to appreciate good value for their products, where people are starting to appreciate counterfeit, what they are calling the products that come in Panya Roots, local products. Again, when as compared to maybe 10, 15 years ago, the market was much smaller. So units would be built in one, two units. Now we are seeing multiple hundred units. So the demand has definitely gone up for all products, but so has the appreciation of quality in the market. And, and also people are now demanding value for their products. Catch Chris giving an oversight of what it takes to have a great business. Everybody over here I'm sure has a good idea. The thing is that good ideas don't necessarily make great businesses. Great businesses come from, it may not be not so good idea, but passionate people with fantastic execution. There's things you can do to tell how much that idea, how much that concept, how much that business means to the person. Are they willing to literally die for it? Do they have what it takes on the long term? Are they looking to drive a Range Rover tomorrow? Or is this about building a lifestyle or building a, a real strong business? So there's, there's ways you can measure passion. Typically, one could say that when people get tired of formal jobs and decide to go into business or sometimes when hey um, they might get made redundant sometimes they passionately take up an idea but there's ways of telling that somebody is passionate about something for me it's about building capacity in people I believe 100 percent that the issue of job creation is not going to come from big business it's going to come from small businesses who hire two three four people it's going to come from individual entrepreneurs who are passionate about uplifting people from poverty. So it's not about the money. So success and failure for me is not whether the business did make money. It's about did I uh, learn from the industry? Did somebody learn from the business model? And are we gaining, are we progressing all of us together in this entrepreneurial journey?
pretty interesting, right? Entrepreneurs Bootcamp takes place every year. Call on the team to be part of their next camp. Next, we'll look at other properties available in the market. Emerald Court is located along Kilimani Road. It is a three-bedroom house that is tastefully finished to serve the modern living. Accommodation includes spacious lounge, spacious dining area, visitor's cloakroom, modern kitchen, one bedroom ensuite and a common bathroom for the other, master ensuite and balcony that acts as the utility area. Salient features include 24-hour man gate, perimeter wall with electric fencing, swimming pool, parking and manicured gardens. Price is on inquiry. Magnificent five-bedroom machinette to let in Kileleshwa along Mijikenda Road set on a quarter of an acre. It's a serene private environment ideal for expatriates and company executives. Accommodation includes spacious lounge with separate dining area, kitchen with fitted storage cabinets, three ensuite bedrooms, two bedrooms share common toilet and bathroom, a DSQ, laundry area, pantry, walk-in closet, and wooden floors. Salient features include landscaped gardens, boundary wall, electric fence, plugged internet access and DSTV connectivity, and ample parking. Price is on inquiry. Crystal Suites are modern luxury apartments with a stylish design, craftsmanship, and attention to detail, offering a total of 16 units. Crystal Suites apartments are off-plan and set for completion in June 2017. The development will comprise of 8 units of 1 bedroom and 8 units of 2 bedroom apartments, which are master en suite. Each unit will be characterized by the following features. Large living room, open plan fitted kitchen, granite countertops, aluminium windows, high-end ceramic tiles, inbuilt wardrobes, visitors cloakroom, intercom services, internet connection ports and CCTV cameras, solar water heater and backup lighting will be available. For the one bedroom, the price is 10.5 million Kenya shillings. And for the two bedroom, the price is 15.5 million Kenya shillings. The bus tour is here with us yet again. This time, we take you to Thika and Mombasa Road and discover new upcoming neighborhoods. Book your seat now and don't be left behind. Mombasa County is indeed Kenya's fastest growing city with investment opportunities. That's it for today. Connect with me on our Twitter, Facebook and Instagram pages and I'd like to hear from you. If you have missed any of our shows, you can catch them on our YouTube channel. See you next week for another informative, interesting show where we bring you beautiful and inspiring homes defining elegant living. As always, your property starts, starts right here. Remember, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri! Mm -hmm.